Hi, and welcome to the month, uh, bi monthly meeting of the SPLOS Citizens Oversight Committee. As a reminder to everyone on this WebEx call, we will be rebroadcast on YouTube, so because this is a public meeting. So, welcome um, to another strange month that we're all dealing with COVID. I uh, think I have most everybody called roll to be sure you're getting counted as present. If not, now's a good time to speak up. Jay's here. I wasn't on the roll call yet. Okay, Jay's here. Anybody else? All right. Um, you should have received a copy of the minutes, so if you've reviewed those and if there are no changes i'll entertain a motion move to approve, move to approve madam chairman thank you jay second thank you all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. can't see everybody so is there if anybody says no i'll need to to hear that no no's great minutes pass unanimously and now we'll go to hear from the finance department. Good afternoon, everybody. Um, our current collections to date for the 2016 SWAS is approximately $682 million. And that is approximately $110 million over our projection. And then our expenditures to date are approximately six hundred and forty-eight million. All right. Are there any questions regarding finance report? No questions. All right. Thank you. We'll now hear from, oh, is there a, Bill, are you going to present? No, ma'am, I was just listening in. Oh. If there was any questions I could help with. Okay, there was a slideshow going on at the top, and I just. I think that was for Priscilla's. Oh, okay. All right, any questions of Bill or Priscilla before we move on? How is this tracking, this is Buckley, how is this tracking considering the economic situation right now compared to what we'd be expecting this time, say, a prior year? We actually had a very solid collection the last several months. So we were anticipating a downwards, uh, downward trend in the actual collections. So just to kind of give you an idea, August of 20, we collected $13.5 million. And then August of 19, we collected four, just over 14, but that was the highest, one of the highest months that year. So we're pretty good as far as pace of where we've typically been. Um, calendar year 19, just to kind of give you an idea, we averaged roughly 13.4 million. So we're right on right on pace to where we were for fiscal year 19. We really anticipated this to take a slide back. Now, it definitely did in April and May. We dropped to just around 11, 11.2 11 million, but it has rebounded since June. June, we trade, trend, trended up to 12.7, then 13.5, and then 13.5 again. So it is, it is kind of leveled out, but we've seen uh, a nice rebound, and we are still trending significantly above where we would expect it to be. That's great. Hey, Bill, this is Bill. This is Jay. Uh, <clears throat> they said we were a hundred million up. What were we exactly this time last year? Was it similar? Uh, let's see. I can tell you. So through August of nineteen, we were eighty-one million. So we've still made up some significant ground. We're averaging um, from September of nineteen through to date about 2.4 million a month over projections. So that's, we're still trending in a very positive direction here. Yeah, and that would get that 19 as far as the, so far this year kind of thing. Yes, sir. Gotcha. And I don't know why I don't know. 
once I threw them somewhere, I guess. All right, any further questions? Yeah, this is Frank Wigington. I have a question, if you don't mind. Sure. So, what do the experts attribute this to when you sh when all indications would be that it shouldn't be this way? Is there any uh, rationale for this bill? So, what we're seeing, and we've kind of talked to, I mean, we don't get a very good breakout from the state as far as where the numbers are coming from. What we anticipate and we're seeing is there's a big uptick in online purchases, which is driving some of these numbers. I mean, obviously, we know we're not having ball games here, so you can't contribute it to home games for the Braves and things of that nature, which we would have had in last year's numbers. So despite not having some, you know, one of the big drivers that we typically see, you're seeing increases. I mean, just as we go around town, you're seeing, you know, Home, and home Depot and Lowe's, those types of stores doing a very good business. And with people staying at home, I don't know if your house is anything like mine. It feels like an Amazon box arrives every day. Um, so you're, we're definitely seeing a lot of online purchases that are, we feel are, is what's really driving this. Okay. I, I just, uh, I, my simple mind tells me that, uh, so many home improvement projects are going on and those are big ticket items. I mean, you can buy a pair of shoes. That's one thing, but right. you buy some windows and doors for your house and you, you really, uh, spend some money. So I was just uh, wondering if they've taken any of that in consideration. That, that's I, we don't have any really solid data to base that on, but, you know, just from, you know, being around the county and, you know, if anybody, any home is like our, like mine, when we're uh, at home, I, I feel like I end up with a lot of things to do around the house. So uh, that's why we're seeing a lot of money coming in from Home Depot and Lowe's. Uh, those stores are definitely very busy, but you're right. The Home Depot project or the home improvement projects have a big price tag versus you know, maybe, you know, a few bucks here and there going out. All right. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Uh, next, we'll hear from Janislaw. Is Kennesaw online? Yep, sorry about that. Uh, That's okay. Yep, my name is Marty Hughes. I'm the Assistant City Manager for Kennesaw, and I'll be the one giving you the presentation okay. of our SPLOSS program. Great. All right, next slide, please. So uh, we'll be talking about the 2005, 11, and 16 SPOS programs, breaking them up. Uh, first, talking about the transportation projects that completed and the inactive projects for those years. Then giving you some more details on the active projects and then the uh, remaining city county projects that fall under the transportation category. After that, I'll be discussing the parks and recreation and cultural affairs projects, specifically in public safety infrastructure and facilities and then finalizing up finalizing with the property acquisition and economic development all right if you'll just click through the next slide please the first subject will be transportation next slide the completed and inactive transportation project specifically our pine mountain we've completed that one uh made some great progress rutledge road as mentioned previously about a year ago we talked about we suspended that project due to the lack of funds and the cost of that project. Completed Stanley Road to Collins Street, complete. Kennesaw Due West, also complete. Um, I won't read the slides to you. You got them right there in front of you. Um, Cobb International Boulevard, that's the one I do want to just mention about that. Uh, higher than expected costs. Uh, we did relocate those funds to the Stanley College project, and that is now complete. All right, next slide, please. From 2005, the active project is Old Highway 41. I am pleased to announce to the Oversight Committee that I feel very comfortable in talking with uh, our, our city engineer and our staff that we will actually have this project complete in late October. So we're just doing some final work, specifically doing some, some road work. We had a little bit of challenge there with some easements and some property acquisition. 
but we finally got through all that. <coughs> though the rains that uh, occurred earlier uh, in the project definitely was an issue, but more importantly, as we're all affected, uh, COVID uh, really, really hampered the completion date uh, of this project. But again, as I mentioned, this project will be complete at the end of October, early November. Next slide, please. For the Cherokee Street improvements, uh, gonna be widening this road to three lanes, improving some intersections, uh, also adding some curb, gutter, and sidewalks. Uh, this um, was a two-phased uh, SPLOS project from 2005 to 2011. You can see the expenditures there. Uh, estimated start date is November 2020. We're also going to be linking this with another SPLOS project in the bidding process with the Ben King project. Uh, we did run into some glitches with this because of a developer was buying some of the many properties that we had to uh, work with and to gain uh, right of way. And so that created uh, a significant delay, but we have met with a developer uh, who is back on board and we're moving forward uh, with the current times. Next slide, please. Resurfacing, specifically um, sidewalks and streets. Uh, we again broke that out into two different SPLOS years, 2011 and 2016. Uh, many significant uh, completion, as you can see, for 2011, 100% spent. For the 2016, what we're doing is that we're combining them with other SPLOS projects. Um, since I mentioned some of the other roadway projects that we can do a little bit more uh, using the sidewalk and resurfacing dollars. Next slide, please. Sardis Street Extension. This is a very large project uh, from 2016. As you can see there, it's gonna be an upgrade of the transportation system, uh, um, improve traffic congestion, and really complement the downtown area as we keep moving forward with the, um, the, the improvement of our depot park. We're also gonna be tying that to the, the 2022 SPLOST as well. Uh, but in that meantime, uh, we're doing a lot of preliminary design work is underway, working with our city engineers, and we're just working um, at, at spending that money as smartly as we can, knowing that this is going to be a very long-term project. Next slide, please. Also, as a part of the Sardis Street overall project, not just the extension, but also adding in the overpass. Uh, money is set aside for this, as you can see in the budget of $6 million. This will allow us to construct the overpass over CSX Railroad um, and, and do some more uh, improved realignment um, for the city and the main uh, downtown of the city. This goes right straight into our city's downtown and depot master plan to create the pedestrian friendly zone. And uh, we're also gonna be working with Cobb County at, to conform with their comprehensive plan and major thoroughfare. Estimated start date will be probably uh, mid to late 2021. Next slide, please. For Ben King Road, I've already mentioned that, how we're gonna link that up with the Cherokee Street project. Uh, so we're doing a lot of right of way acquisitions. We're working already with the utility companies as we keep moving forward on this project. Uh, we will, uh, we do believe that we will uh, receive some, some good savings because we are gonna be linking this with the Cherokee Street project. Sadly though, we are finding that uh, like with anything, in uh, construction, costs always seem to go up, and so we're looking for ways to prudently use taxpayer dollars. Next slide, please. Stormwater infrastructure improvements, again, dealing with a lot of our upgrades of our outfalls, improving our sidewalks, curb and gutter, 
as we can see from the rain, we even got, uh, you know, today and yesterday, we do uh, recognize some of those challenges. Uh, we are 52% obligated in this 2016 SPLOS project. We're going to be using the remainder of our funds uh, to support all the Highway 41, as I mentioned earlier as well. Um, and then also uh, our recreation center that uh, has broke ground a few weeks ago and is uh, uh, already making some significant headway. So again, as we work around the recreation center, Old Highway 41, we know we have a lot of curb and gutter work in those areas uh, and we'll be using these funds. Next slide. For the Cherokee, this is uh, the Cherokee Street Auxiliary Lane. This is the uh, active city county project. And so I'll defer more to them, but I, I feel comfortable because we do talk regularly regarding uh, updates um, on this. And so as you can see, Glosson Enterprises has received the award for this um, city county project. Next slide. Another active city county project is the McCullum Ben King Roundabout. Uh, C.W. Matthews uh, has that with a start date um, um, this year, obviously, and then an 18-month timeline. So again, another another great project working together between uh, Kennesaw and the county. Next slide. And then the last uh, joint uh, uh, city county project, this one is pending. Uh, there is a shortage of dollars on this. And so we're working with the county to see where we can do some uh, potential reallocation, reassessment of the scope uh, because of the uh, amount of work. It's, it's just gonna be a costly project. And so um, we're just going back and see how we can value engineer and keep this project moving forward. Next slide. And next. So some of the completed projects under the Parks, uh, Recreation and Cultural Affairs from 2011, just show you the completed projects there, the skate park splash pad. Huge win for the city, huge win I think really for Northwest Cobb County. Uh, improved our parking uh, for Swift Cantrell as well and uh, did some renovation work for our community center. Next slide. For Depot Park, this is a 12 phase project where we're gonna turn the downtown area into uh, a green space with walking trails and amphitheater and definitely gonna need to do some parking improvements for our downtown area. Funds right now are only for phase one through seven and you can kind of see where we're at um, in that uh, top picture of what is phase one through seven. Phase six and seven is ongoing right now. And another way that we're trying to be prudent with taxpayer dollars, we combine that with our Smith Gilbert Gardens and that visitor center project, uh, phase one. And that was awarded to uh, JG Leone. And uh, we're expecting that completion, hopefully uh, um, in November, might get bumped 30 days, but we feel very comfortable that, uh, that they're gonna stay on track. Next slide. For 2016, for the spot of the park improvements, obviously uh, you can read there, uh, we improved our dog park, another big win for the city, uh, the synthetic surface for the playgrounds, um, volleyball court, tennis courts, just those typical areas that were really to expand our parks and recreation opportunities there. 73% obligation um, in those expenditures. Next slide, something that's been uh, near and dear to our hearts here in Kennesaw is the Recreation Center that uh, started in 2016, uh, SPLOST. So I mentioned that uh, we, we have broke ground. It is going up rapidly. I just signed off on uh, some, some bills to be paid for that one right before this meeting. Um, Four and a half million dollars was what was uh, set aside, but uh, the actual cost is seven million dollars. We did work through our mayor and council uh, to, to um, gather some other monies and receive that approval. In addition, we work very diligently with gate construction to value engineer uh, phase one of the recreation center. And I think the city is going to really appreciate uh, 
this, this wonderful gold nugget that we're going to have here in the city because it'll have an indoor track, basketball courts, exercise room, and then phase two will we'll have uh, gymnastics. Next slide, please. I mentioned before about Smith Gilbert Gardens and the phase one, how we tied that in with the Depot Park. This actual 2011 and 2016 um, project uh, is a combination of public and private. Phase one is the uh, public part, obviously with the SPLOS dollars, where we're doing the site work for the parking lot, as you can see in the picture there, uh, where the bus is and the cars park, that's kind of phase one. Phase two is the multi-purpose education and visitor center. That will actually be handled uh, through a capital campaign on the private side. So another great opportunity of seeing real teamwork here in the city and the county and the surrounding North Georgia area. Our budget really for 2011, 1.8 million. Uh, we're 64% obligation rate and that's going um, on schedule. The 2016, uh, we're just now beginning to, to uh, utilize those funds, but we again feel very strongly as we keep moving forward with phase one that uh, uh, we'll be uh, prudently using the taxpayer dollars and, 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 and uh, spending those funds accordingly to stay on track. Next slide, please, for public safety, infrastructure and facilities and acquisition development. The first one that we want to show is complete is the purchase of, of the police vehicles and the uh, countywide radio system upgrade. So those were 2005 and 2016 SPLOSTs. Next slide. Um, for 2005 and 2016, we have uh, improved many parts of our facilities regarding ADA standards, energy efficiencies, uh, roof repair. We just completed the roof repair a few months ago for City Hall. And we're also looking at not only doing the uh, uh, cybersecurity upgrades, but also actual physical security upgrades to many of our city facilities. We've already expended all the 2011 dollars. Um, and then now we're, we're about complete with 2016 dollars. We have a few minor projects that we're going to be doing for uh, facility improvements, and that will pretty much clear out the entire SPLOS budget um, for infrastructure and facilities. So the last slide I want to present to you is the property acquisition and economic development. Uh, that again is tying in with other SPLOS projects to support economic development, road widening, uh, road widening, depot park, and the gardens. Again, looking at it from a holistic standpoint for the city and how we uh, uh, adequately use these funds. So we're about 45% uh, obligated of using those funds as we again link them to other SPLOS projects. All right, next slide. That's all I have. Are there any questions? Uh, I'd be glad to answer for you. Marty, I know you can't advocate, but I was wondering if you had been able to educate the public about the upcoming SPLOS. I know it's been challenging to do much of that, but I was just curious. Mm -hmm. Yes, um, I, I've tried, but it's it's been so difficult to engage people with the COVID. So, did you hold virtual meetings, or what did y'all do? Uh, I showed up to the first couple of um, meetings, but that that's all I've been able to do. Okay. Alice, I have a question for uh, Mr. Hughes. Okay. Uh, two, actually, on the parks and recreation side, and I get a, a lot of questions about this for all parks. Um, are y'all doing anything uh, in building any pickleball courts? I know that sounds kind of true, but I don't play pickleball, but I understand it's such a, a growing thing, especially, especially with the, uh, now. It's, I, I can't believe it. Like, you can't even get a pickleball court open. That, that's one thing. And the second part of my question is, uh, how much of Cherokee Street is going to be historical, and who is that deemed historical by the city or the state, or how, how, what is the historical significance of part of Cherokee Street being deemed uh, historical? 
That 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 historical. So I'll answer your second question first. The the historical part is is uh, decided by the state, and our planning and zoning um, uh, director is working with the state in that regard. To answer your second question or your first question uh, regarding pickleball, you're exactly right. Pickleball is, is a great sport. Having played it a few times myself, just to kind of get that experience. Um, and, and that is going to be one one uh, opportunity that will be uh, within our new recreation center. Okay, I understand they're fairly inexpensive to build and maintain, and they are uh, greatly used. So I, I appreciate that, and I'll pass that on to the folks that asked me about it. Thank you so much. Mr. Hughes, do you um, typically post signage along a uh, project that's being funded by SPLOS so that the public knows uh, where the funds are coming from? Yes, we do. We try to, yes. Great. Hey, Marty, this is Jay. Hey, uh, Main Street. I'm concerned about Main Street. I guess the Sardis and the Moon Station thing that's coming will relieve a significant portion of Main Street because Main Street is backed up to the airport half the days and and we had a little bit of a reprieve you know with covid and it seemed nice there for a minute me living on main street but now it seems to be back to the even worse than it was pre covid when do you think that that you know the sardis street and that stuff as far as relief and how much relief do you think it's going to bring to main street once that's completed and when do you think it'll be completed uh, that's a good question. It just seems like, uh, you know, again, for somebody um, who travels back and forth off of Main Street to go home, um, th that is a constant challenge depending on, you know, is there a wreck on Cobb Parkway? Is people trying to come, you know, off of 575 or 75? You know, which way are they trying to go to get home? Uh, there's always a lot of variables to, to that. Um, the way that we keep talking about Sardis Street Extension in particular is trying to alleviate some of that pressure off of Main Street, whether it is, you know, getting the trucks uh, and putting in our truck route signage that we've done, getting them um, away from anywhere near downtown, because that is always a problem. Obviously, trucks can't come downtown across the, the, the tracks, but again, you'll occasionally get that one that just creates a bottleneck. Uh, obviously, then you have a train coming through. You want to go by the museum. That creates the bottleneck as well. So again, trying to alleviate some of those, you know, opportunities um, of where you're going to have to face a, a railroad. I think by creating that uh, Sardis Street overpass, I think will immediately provide that relief that everybody keeps looking for. Jay, as you're talking about. So I think that's going to happen. It's just going to be what are those secondary effects again, like an accident, like excess traffic, like weather. But I think in the big scheme of things, on a good day, I think you'll see a quick impact as we go out and, and uh, complete Sardis Street uh, extension and the overpass. So now, then, your next question kind of goes back to, okay, when do you think we might complete all that? There's going to be another link to uh, uh, the 2022 SPLOS that we put in there. And I think if tying all that together, I think we could probably have something that would be viable. Again, don't don't want to hold the city. Um, this is Marty's opinion. I don't want to hold the city accountable to some of this because there's so many variables to all this. But I think we could see immediate impact probably in, in 20. Uh, 3, 24, 25 time frame as we keep moving forward, trying to tie the this all together. I appreciate all the city's doing, Marty. So thank you for everything you guys are doing to work for that. So you're saying that the Cherokee Street traffic flowing in the Main Street is is part of at least what backs it all the way up because of that intersection, sort of the light, the main light. Um, I'd have to go back, probably do a little bit more digging on that just to make mm -hmm. sure that I'm not going to speak off the cuff on that. But I, as I have personally seen, there's a lot of complexities of the road uh, traffic that comes in and out around Main Street. Yeah. You got Moon Station coming in. Then, then you obviously you got McCullum. So there's a there's a lot of different tentacles that reaches out that and people looking for the side roads as well. That just creates the bottleneck around Main Street. Just exactly to your point. Thank you, Marty. Mm -hmm. 
Mr. Hughes, Bill Carver here. Uh, earlier in your presentation, you talked about Cobb International Boulevard, the funds from that project being diverted over for use in, uh, I believe, the Stanley Collins project. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what happened there, what you were trying to address, and where that might leave us on Cobb International? Yeah, the big problem that you run into there, again, a lot of times is there was some uh, underestimation of a project cost, and it just didn't become realistic. It doesn't become feasible to even try to, to do some of those things. And then, you know, at that time, the, the, the city had to make a decision on where is best to at least accomplish something. And that's one thing I think we can all agree on, the Oversight Committee and the citizens, what can you accomplish with the money you have? And if you underestimate, you just got to make those tough decisions. Um, we, we occasionally will discuss uh, uh, what do we want to do with carbon and natural. Is that something we can go back and look at? And uh, we just have not really come to a good solution to what we want to do at that point. Um, it didn't make it in the, the 2022 uh, SPLOS project list that was approved by mayor and council. But we do keep bringing that out of, is there something else that we can do? Anything further for Kennesaw? All right, that seems Perfect. to be all of our questions. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, Powder Springs, are you on with us? Hi, good afternoon. Uh, yes, we are. This is Pam Connor, I'm city manager with Powder Springs. I'm glad to be here with you again this afternoon. Um, our city engineer and SPLOS program manager, Croy Engineering, is here as well uh, to present. Chad Kastner, I think, is on. Yes. Uh, are you, Chad? Okay. Um, so thank you for being here. Chad's going to go over the things that we've completed um, with our 2016 program and then get into what we have uh, underway right now, as well as what we have planned for um, the next year and a half to complete out the program. We're happy to answer any questions at the end. Thank you, Pam. Uh, my name is Chad Kastner. I'm the program manager with Core Engineering for the City of Power Springs, the SPLOS program. Um, I'm going to run through this with you today. If you will, next slide, please. This is our tier one project list. Um, this was in the memorandum that was voted on by voters and passed. This is our um, project list that we've been working off of. Next slide, please. Our public safety has been a really great part of our SPLOS. We've um, done our radio lease with Cobb County with it, our software upgrades and vehicles. It's been a great way to keep our public safety employees working hard and having good equipment. Next slide, please. The linear park is another one of our great features in the city. It ties to the Silver Comet. And we have actually been able to leverage several programs such as DNR money. Um, we did a grant to help fund a part of our special needs playground, our all-inclusive playground. We have used CVG money to pay for certain aspects and it has really grown and it has gone all the way from the 2005 program all the way up to the 2016 program. And we even have money in the 2022 program um, that's budgeted to help keep growing it. Next slide. Hopkins Road and Lancer Drive Parks are two passive parks that the city has some floodplain property that was deeded over to them. And they took the initiative to put in a, um, a pocket park at both locations. The one at Lancer has the volleyball court you see and walking trails and picnic area. And then the one on Hopkins Road has a disc golf and walking trails also. And the community has greatly enjoyed these great facilities. Our facility improvements, we have done things such as the HVAC upgrades. We actually did an electrical upgrade to the court building that needs to be done. We have done citywide water heater change outs, access control at the Ford Center, fire alarm upgrades, roof replacements, and ADA compliance upgrades. <laughs> Next slide. With our general streets task, we have done such projects as the Hotel Street parking lot, which has added much additional, much needed additional parking in the downtown area. Jackson Way, changing it to a one-way, which ties into our new downtown park. 
and adding more on street parking and Oak View, we were able to reconfigure the parking on it to add more parking right there on our downtown amenity. Flint Hill Road was a project that we did with Cobb County as a joint project, and there was a lot of safety issues in the area, and we were able to realign two roads and bring them in to an intersection and signalize it, and we have gotten great input from the residents and from people around the area just saying how much they love this project and how much safer they feel driving in that area now with it. Our resurfacing program, we have knocked out several roads on it and we have quite a few that are, we are currently putting out, they're currently out to bid and we will continue to resurface throughout it. This has been a great tool to allow the city to keep their roads in excellent condition. The Broad Street project is currently under construction. Baldwin, construct, Baldwin is the contractor on it. This is an area with several businesses around it that needed to be redone. So we were able to reslope the road, put it in with better drainage and make it safer, make it ADA compliant and make it more of a gateway to these businesses and to the downtown park. Intersection improvement for Larks Road at CH James. This project will include it, um, extending the turn lane, realigning the road to make everything flow better and to create some safety improvements. This project is currently under design right now and hopefully will be out to bid in the next 90 to 120 days. New Macklin Road at Macedonia Road. This one will be adding some um, signages and re, uh, excuse me, do resurfacing the intersection, re-signing it and striping it to help improve some safety issues and help the timing on the signal to help the traffic flow more smoothly. The intersection improvement Sailors Parkway at CH James Parkway. This project will be modifying the current median to allow more storage space in there for to extend the turn lane to allow more traffic to flow. This project is currently out to design, I'm um, currently out to bid right now. The intersection improvement, Dallas Fire Springs Road at Florence Road. This is actually a project that will bridge between the 2016 and the 2022 program to put in a roundabout, which you see in the top right part of the slide, um, to help traffic flow in that area. There has uh, been a little bit of safety issues in there. We've had a, um, quite a few wrecks, so this will help move that traffic more smoothly and safely. Brownsville Road, this project is currently in design. This will take an area that has been the product of many developments in there and people working in the areas in front of their developments. This will realign the road and just take all the piecework of the road and make it uniform so it's easier for people to follow and drive safely through that corridor and clean up, make it more appealing for all the commercial businesses in the area. Mary Street uh, Streetscapes Project. This project is scheduled for fall of 2022 and it will be a streetscapes project along Marietta Street and New Macklin Road to tie it into the downtown corridor of Marietta Street and make it a more appealing gateway into the city. This is our current SPLOS budget. So far, we have been doing pretty well with it. We have been able to get some other funds, some um, CPG money and different grants to help offset some of the cost. But so far, we're keeping um, the total SPLOS under budget and are looking great. And this is our project schedule that has kind of how we're planning on finishing out the, 20, the 2016 program into 2022 and completing all of our tier one projects. And with that, um, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, um, Chad, this is Sally Riddle. Um, the chart on your spending is impossible to read on my computer screen um, at this point. Could you just give an overview as far as the amount, overall amount that you've had budgeted from uh, this most recent SPLOS and the percent obligated? Um, that would be helpful. Thank you. Okay, um, so our original budget is 14.826 million. I'm trying to see if I have my finance sheet in here. Um, 
was trying to see if we have the current to date. I know it's around ten million dollars. Total expenses to date have been nine million four hundred thirty thousand one hundred eighty five dollars and seventy eight cents. And then we have a total encumbrance on current projects of one million seventy three dollars fifty three cents about fifty three dollars and nine cents. Okay. Trying to see if I can pull up my financial sheet. Chad, did you find it? Yeah, it's just having a hard time opening. I'm sorry. It's I don't know what's going on our system. I've got the finance sheet. I'm just trying to get it open. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so to date. Looks like the to date is the ten million five twenty. That's our current obligations. Our current, including all of our reimbursements and stuff, our current to date is thirteen million one hundred eighty-eight dollars four hundred thirty-six. I'm sorry, thirteen million one hundred eighty-eight thousand four hundred thirty-six dollars and ninety-eight cents. And our total obligations is ten million five hundred three thousand two hundred thirty eight dollars and eighty seven cents. Thank you, Chad. No problem. Sorry, it took me a minute. Just the computer didn't want to cooperate. Pam, do y'all also post signs around uh, different SPLOS projects around the city to let the people know? What's funding them? We do. We post signs, your SPLOS dollars um, at use uh, on whenever we do any of our projects. Um, and um, just to, to answer the other question, the question that you ask, um, Kennesaw, we have fortunately, we were able to conduct two in-person town hall meetings uh, before the pandemic hit. We had one last November, then we had one in um, at the end of January. We have since had a virtual one with Cobb County, then a virtual one on our own. And we have another one scheduled in October. Uh, it'll be a virtual one as well, but it'll be a town, a stream town hall meeting in October about the SPLOS program. That's great. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions of Powder Springs? Last chance. All right, thank y'all. Thank, thank you. you. Parks and Rec is up next. Hey everybody, it's Tom Bills. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, good. Um, so uh, it's nice to see everyone, if not being in the same room together, hopefully soon. Um, uh, glad to be able to talk about our, uh, starting with our 2011 program. Um, our total allocation was a little over 87 million. Um, we spent 84 and a half or so to date. Um, we are chipping away at that last 1% uh, of projects um, to, to be able to complete um, all of them. We are, the couple that I'm going to show you though, are um, a couple things that we're doing in uh, to just finish out some existing, some projects that have already been completed. So I'll show you the next one in the next slide. This is at Lions Park. 
um, in South Cobb. Um, off to the left uh, and down a little bit out of this picture, um, you can see, you'd be able to see some of the um, improvements that we'd made in that park to the ball fields, the dugouts, and built a new uh, concession restroom, which the, which the original concession restroom is the one that's being pointed out at the top. Um, and that's just below that red arrow um, to the left is the um, South Cobb Community Center. Um, the, the new concession stand kind of took the place of the upper concession stand restroom and maintenance building that we had. And uh, it's kind of, um, it, we had a little bit of money left and the commissioner asked us to put it towards improving that building. So we're gonna remove the picnic overhang that you can sort of see out the back um, and replace the, the concession room and uh, with a breezeway. Um, it's out to bid now with the bids due on the 8th. And the next slide will show you our concept of that. And use your imagination to put these two pictures together. Um, the actual building is there. Um, the, uh, the structural outline is below it. Um, we're gonna basically cut the building in half um, and add a, um, a gable roof, another gable roof um, perpendicular to the, to, the, to the entire roof line with a breezeway that's gonna go through. So we'll take the place of that covered restroom in the back, or sorry, the covered uh, pavilion in the back, replace it with a, with a breezeway that, that uh, goes from front to back. So you'll be able to see all the way through the building um, on the left side, uh, we're, we're, um, we've already done some improvements to the restrooms. Um, our, our, uh, there's some storage over there. We're removing the concession stand since that's uh, duplicated now um, at the bottom. And then off to the right will be our, our maintenance building. The next station or the next one is um, just at the, the at our just behind our um, new administrative complex, our new administrative administrative building in our complex. Um, our our staff, uh, our current construction crew, um, has built a new pole barn that's to the left for storage of a variety of things. Um, so we can never get enough uh, space to port to, to get things um, out of the sun and out of the rain. So um, we're almost done with that. And if you can, no, no, go back, please. Thank you. Um, on the right there, if you can see that, that low wall that's right behind our small engine repair shop, um, we're going to have an area that we'll be able to uh, clean our own vehicles. Uh, where be, we're getting a pressure washer that'll fit there. Um, in the meantime, since I took this picture, we have concrete there. The wall is completed. It's been cleaned up. Uh, we're going to be able to, to wash our vehicles um, in a controlled area uh, to, um, to save money and also to, to just keep them cleaner and looking better. So that's, uh, that'll pretty much finish up the 11 expenditure for our uh, administrative complex. Okay, now you can go. All right, moving into 2016, we have uh, the total allocation of just over 69,000. We spent about 49,000 of that. Um, the number of projects completed is 83%. There's 10% under construction, 6% in design, and future projects, uh, 1%. So the first one to talk about is, this is actually two projects. Um, I think you've seen uh, last time I showed you both of these, either under construction or in planning, at the top of the picture is uh, the new parking lot that serves the Mountain View Community Center. This is the one where we used to share parking with the, with the elementary school that was right next door, um, which is now a, 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 a shopping center um, with a variety of, of new businesses. Um, but we've uh, replaced the parking uh, behind that building with, with the new parking that you see there. There's about um, 70 spaces there. Uh, that, that serve that building and also um, on a, on a uh, with an event would serve the art place, which is what which is shown in the in the front there. Um, this is was a very stubborn uh, roof. Um, none of it, nothing in this building is has right angles. It's very artistic, which is uh, suits its purpose um, as an art center. Um, and everything is at weird angles, and we couldn't we get roof leaks that we could never find. So we decided the best way to to do that, to, to fix that issue was to replace the roof, which is complete. Um, this, this photograph was done about a, uh, a week ago, um, and you'll be ha happy to know that it, there's, there are no leaks in the last 48 hours. So um, that's, I think we had a pretty good test for it. Um, but uh, um, we're very pleased to have that completed. This is at Hyde Farm. Uh, we have uh, been looking forward to having a a farmer on board um, to actually uh, turn the historic Hyde farm into a working farm. Um, and before we can do that, we needed to get a, a space to have uh, storage and a secure place for equipment and such. 
Um, there's a small office in there uh, and, a, and storage, as I said, um, and a restroom. Uh, that's complete now. We're going to do a, a few more things to this, uh, to this building um, ourselves as we sort of finish it out. We're going to put a, an apron, a concrete apron around the outside, um, three or three or three and a half feet away from, uh, from each of the faces. Um, put some gutters on that didn't didn't make it into the first design and, and that sort of thing. But other for all intents and purposes, this building is complete. Here are um, we're big on roofs uh, in, at the moment. Um, the uh, the roof to the left at the stage at East Cobb Park. If any of you have seen that before, um, it's in the back of the park um, and it was uh, it was there. And when this when the park was opened in two thousand three. The wooden structure that you can see um, standing above the the, um, the stone pillars um, was starting to show its age. You can see that it's um, there's some um, architectural flourishes that come out from under the roof, and and those had started to, to deteriorate from the weather. Um, but we have we we just completely uh, uh, replaced all that based on the exact original architectural design. So it looks the same, except it's all brand new. So we're pretty pleased with that. Um, also in East Cobb Park. This is, the, this is the maintenance building, um, and I'll speak about that a little bit more um, later on. We're just getting started with, uh, with a bigger project to be able to uh, replace um, 20 different roofs in uh, 10 different parks, um, and those include small buildings, uh, maintenance buildings, and pavilions, and, and, and those kinds of things one at a time, um, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. Next, please. Um, we are doing a joint project with the Cobb school system to um, have a joint use of a field at Fuller's Park. Um, this is down at the bottom of the park. Um, if you're familiar with the park, you just keep driving all the way down. The rec center is to the left. The small building um, to, the, to the left of the graphic that I have there um, is the, uh, the football concession restroom building that we built earlier in the, in the 11 program. But this is a turf field that will, it's an odd shape because there's, there, there's three different sports that'll happen there for the most part. Um, there's uh, um, lacrosse, the, the feeder team from, from uh, Walton High School, we use that for lacrosse. The Fuller's Park uh, Baseball Association um, had baseball practice and for small kids down there, we're gonna keep those fields intact um, for them for mem to be able to use those. Um, all in synthetic turf though, just different colors for the, for the infield paths and that sort of thing. Um, and also it'll be, it'll be, so it'll be lined for, for football and baseball or sorry, excuse me, for lacrosse and baseball. And then when football uses it, they'll only use it occasionally, we think. So we didn't want to have it, uh, too many, um, integral lines on there, um, it would start to look plaid. Um, so it's, it's permanently lined for baseball and lacrosse, um, but we can temporarily line it for football. It's an, it'd be an 80 foot field for their younger kids to be able to play on the turf field. Um, the engineer that designed it is Gaskins. Uh, the contractors advanced sports and construction's underway, and we hope to have it done early in the spring, uh, depending on the weather, of course. This is Discovery Park at the Riverline. Um, it's been um, a long time coming, but it's all, we're almost done. Um, it's, uh, the new parking lot is what you can see along Discovery Boulevard there. Um, at the top of the picture uh, is a dedicated inn with a uh, lane with parking um, along the frontage uh, and parking for a couple buses, a trail system that goes up to the top of the ridge and down to the river with interpretive signage, the contractors Ward Humphreys, and uh, we hope to have it done um, mid to late fall, uh, depending on the weather. The next picture shows at the very top of that, um, it shows this sort of cutout, which is where a uh, prefab restroom will come in uh, and uh, if we're getting the plumbing ready, it'll just the, the restroom itself will be small, one on each side, um, and it'll just hopefully fit perfectly right in that, uh, right in that uh, little cutout. Um, that is also the site of, of uh, where we'll have some signage and benches and, and, uh, and uh, trash cans and that kind of thing. So that um, that's sort of the entrance to the, to the trail system. Next, please. Um, in our technology improvements, uh, the, the, um, we have uh, security cameras that are going in, um, in a variety of nine facilities. They'll inter integrate with what's elsewhere um, deployed out throughout the county in our enterprise system there um, so that uh, public safety will be able to, um, to, to um, look at uh, anything of interest that they might see, um, have to see in a camera. So basically, it, um, it it will show the inside and outside of the buildings, plus all approaches 
um, and a good shot of the parking lot. So we're pretty pleased with with this. The the, the board of commissioners has just uh, uh, awarded this contract, and uh, we're working through the uh, the contracts now. Um, uh, Kimberly and at IS is helping us with those with the contracts, and uh, we'll get to work on that in the next few weeks. And we've also replaced the um, the mobile stage at Miller Park. If you've been to uh, to um, unfortunately, now is about the time of year where you'd be seeing this, but not this year. Um, we're able to. Uh, we have a, a, a mobile stage that that we've had for years and was really showing its its age. We we're able to replace that um, with this, uh, and uh, it looks when it's being um, towed behind a, a truck, um, looks like a basically like a what you might see behind an eighteen wheeler. But the next slide shows what it looks like in use. Um, this is that uh, it's like a transformer. It, it all opens up. It has integrated integrated lighting and sound. Um, the skirt around the, the all the stairs and a ramp that goes up to the stage, um, and it just it opens up. It's it's uh, um, it's a, it's a pretty impressive thing. Um, and this picture, uh, the stage is on the left, and that was a an event at a drive-in cabaret. Um, there's another one I think that's uh, the schedule for this weekend. Um, at Al Bishop Park, um, but the the Lyric Theater uh, put on a show of songs from the from the fifties and sixties. Um, I do not have a picture. What if you were looking? If I were, if you look to the left and behind, you'd see a lot of socially distanced uh, automobiles in uh, designated parking spaces, and people uh, brought their chairs and their tables and flowers, like they do at Chastain, and and everybody seemed to have a really good time. Um, it was a it's, a, it's we, we're being as creative as we can possibly be with uh, uh, the conditions that we have to face now um, with trying to get uh, people out of their houses and give them something to do. On the right side of this picture um, is something that we purchased earlier, uh, which is a, um, a fairly large, it's about 15 by eight foot LED screen that allows us to um, sort of simulcast uh, what's happening on stage so that the people in the back row can see what's going on. Um, if you get to be 30 feet away from that thing, it looks like a high def TV in your living room. It's it's an, it's amazing what what we can get now. And that's it for uh, future projects. Um, I've spoken to you in the past about our um, our this wayfinding uh, and uh, signage program. We're in the last stages of the design for that. Basically, the deliverable for that is a booklet of all the different signs that we're going to have in all of all sizes in, sh in our park um, on, in a single sort of graphical theme, um, but that serve different purposes. But uh, we're, we're in the final uh, um, stages of choosing the, um, the best value of materials and et cetera, so that we can um, have a book that we can hand to a variety of different uh, sign producers and, and everyone will be able to bid the same thing. All the dimensions, all the materials, all the colors, uh, the graphic, everything will be uh, will be um, laid out so that we'll be able to get um, apples to apples on all of our different signs throughout. Um, so uh, once that's done, I'll, I'll uh, share that with you. Our old Clarkdale Park um, in, in right in the sort of in between Powder Springs and Austell um, is under design. The engineering is, is almost complete. The Larry Bell Complex. Um, we have uh, we're replacing all the sanitary, the gravity, um, the, the gravity sewer in that park. There's four different uh, uh, fairly large, well-attended buildings in that complex: the Civic Center, Central Aquatics, Gymnastics Center, and Anderson Theater. All of which can have large crowds. All of which, uh, when you um, run water down the sink, um, it all ends up from all four buildings, by the time it gets back down to, to Glover Street, is in one six inch terracotta pipe. Um, it is, um, we've been worried about that um, ever since we sort of figured that piece out. And uh, we're replacing that with something that'll, that, that um, it, it hasn't failed yet. I should, I should uh, be careful not to say that again, but at any rate, um, we're replacing that. Um, that project will start in a couple of weeks. Uh, um, the, the, the notice proceed is I think a week from Monday. Um, again, I, I mentioned before about the, the roof replacements, um, 20 pavilions and smaller buildings in 10 parks. We've completed five of them, including the one I showed you from East Cobb. And um, we're very pleased with that, with the contractor. Um, they're doing an excellent job and they're staying right on schedule. Uh, and finally, the last one I wanted to talk about is Stout Park in Powder Springs. 
Um, we're nearing completion of design on that one as well for an equestrian park on our 300 plus acres down there. Um, and uh, that'll be an, uh, just an amazing addition to our program. We have a couple of places where people can ride horses, but this is going to um, replace those uh, very, very well. So that's, uh, that's the designs are almost done uh, and um, we're ready to go. Any questions? All right, it finally let me unmute myself. Um, any questions for Tom? Great report, by the way. Thank you. So that um, stage, new stage that you showed, that would be like out in the restaurant pavilion area of the fair normally, if today was a normal day? <laughs> um, well, What's lovely about that thing is it can go wherever uh, the North Register Fair folks want to put it. But yeah, that's probably where it would be. Um, it, was, it, it's, it deserves to be front and center. Very good. Is it about the same size or a little different? It's a little bit bigger. Um, I think it's a little bit deeper. Um, and it's certainly um, safer. Uh, um, and, and certainly safer on the road as well. That was one of the issues um, that we needed to, that we really started to, to, to um, look for a replacement. Okay. Hey, Tom, this is Jay. Hey, I, I'm going to ask this question again about those signs. Is there any any support or any uh, marketing, any any sponsors of those signs that are going to be sold by the county to defer the costs? Um, Tom, we're working on that now. We have, we have a, uh, a consultant who's helping us, uh, or a firm that's helping us to sort of get a sense of, of what the value of those should be um, uh, in terms of, you know, what's a, what's a reasonable thing that, that a sponsor would uh, would pay for um, for different parks and different size signs and that sort of thing. So we're getting close to that. We are. Yeah, we were close a couple of years ago. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> okay. All right, thanks. Let us know. Thanks. Okay, sure thing. All right, any more questions for Tom? Okay, next time in person. Thanks, people. Thank you. Have a good one. All right, DOT. Good afternoon. I hope you all are doing well and staying safe and dry um, with all this crazy weather we're having. So, um, for transportation, we're going to talk about the 05 program, the 11 program, and the 2016 program. And um, in our 05 program, we had 30, 345 transportation projects that were identified, and we are 99.42% complete now, thank goodness. So if you go to the next slide, you'll see that we have one project that's actually in design now. That project's Bob Callen Trail Phase 2, and it's scheduled to let summer 2021. And the funding for that project is all Cumberland CID and the Georgia DOT. Um, so there's no county plus dollars associated with that project other than we're helping to manage the project um, from engineering into construction. And then um, in construction, we have our last project that is that has been advertised, and it is our Bells Ferry Road intersection improvement at Turner, Turner Road and Dixon Road. It was led to construction. Um, construction should start this fall, um, and it's about 270 days um, that it will take to construct that. And that's a joint project with the city of Marietta. So on the next slide, you'll see um, this is where we're at today. And if you'll remember, the last time we reported in May, we're really we're really happy to, to see this. Um, our goal is to complete um, the O5 SPLOS program before the end of 2022. It still sounds like a ways away, but we've we've made a lot of progress since May. Um, in um, May, we had five projects that were in. Um, com, um, in progress or close to completion, but not closed out. So we've whittled that down to three projects. Um, we had four projects that are four prior right claims with utility companies, and now we've gotten that down to zero. And the biggest improvement we've had is our right of way claims and, and condemnations. We had nine at $8.25 million, and we've been able to work on those and get those down to five projects with a um, million dollars left um, that we're negotiating with on those. 
So we're really excited about that and, and we're hopeful that before the end of 2022 that we'll have this program completed. Okay, on, the, on the next slide is our 2011 program. So out of the 210 projects, um, we had 210 transportation projects identified. Um, and if we'll go to the next, the next slide, um, you'll see that we have four that are still in the construction phase or the pre-construction phase. One is our Lower Roswell Road, which is scheduled to let for construction probably summer of next year. And that's twinned or paired with our Woodland Drive sidewalks project um, in District 2. And then we have two projects that are identified um, for transit from the 2011 program. One is our signal preemption upgrades, which we submitted an ARC grant application for. And then also our park and ride transfer facilities, which we also submitted an ARC grant application for, but we've not. Um, when ARC um, reviewed the, the project submitted for the 2019 SIP solicitation, they they did a kind of a step back. They they did um, approve some projects, but they're waiting to see how collections and the digest come in for the state before they move forward with um, further um, project selection. So we'll probably hear more about additional projects that we submitted on probably late this year or early next year which would include in those, those two projects that are listed in our pre-construction phase. And then in our construction phase, we have our McCullum Parkway sidewalks, um, which is scheduled for completion in November of 2021, and then our Riverview Road project, which is scheduled summer of 2021. Okay. And this is kind of the same. We, um, we, we've been whittling away at, at our program. So for May of um, this year, we had 25 projects that were in progress are close to completion but not closed out. So we've been able to, to reduce that number by 10. And then also with our unresolved utility prior rights, we had nine um, and we've, we've whittled those down to three. And then in our condemnations, we had 14, which we've been able to reduce down to nine. So we have a total of 27 active projects. And our goal is to, to finalize um, our 2011 program before the end of 2024. Okay. So in our 2016 program, this is where we're at today. Um, and then what we had originally planned when we put together our program um, for, the, for the voters. So we have 158 projects that have been completed out of our two, total of 246 projects. Um, 31 that are in construction and 42 that are actually in the design or engineering phase. So if you go to the next page, we, you'll see the 42 projects that are in pre-construction in the, in the green that are kind of spread out all over the county, along with the 30, 31 projects that are in construction um, with the 158 that have been completed. But we also have 15 identified projects that are remaining to be started um, for this program. So you go to the, the next sheet. Um, over the next few sheets, these are all of the, the 42 projects that we have listed in, um, in our pre-construction design phase or right-of-way phase. Um, I'm not going to read all those. So you'll see they're spread throughout the county. If you'll go to the next slide. Um, some of these are really, um, we, we have a lot of, we're really excited about one of them is our um, railroad quiet zone in district four. And our next sheet is, this is the last of, of the ones that are in the engineering phase. And then on to the next sheet, these are projects that we're going to highlight in, in construction. So out of the 30, the one projects, um, we're, we're going to talk a little bit more about the old 41 highway bridge in District uh, 3, which is a joint project with the City of Marietta. Our Lost Mountain Road at Midway Road, Mirror Lake Drive in District 1. McCullum Parkway at Ben King, which is a joint project with the City of Kennesaw in District 3. Windy Hill Road at Terrell Hill Road Connector in District 2, and then the I-20 eastbound ramps at Riverside Parkway in District 4. And if you go to the next page, um, you'll see that we'll, we'll also kind of highlight um, Cherokee Street, which is joint with the City of Kennesaw in Districts 1 and 3, Ebenezer Road Sidewalks, and then Mableton Parkway Pedestrian Improvements. And then this sheet is actually the, the next 15 projects that we have not, that have been identified, but we've not started. So you'll see Two are identified drainage projects. We also have two that are to be determined because we'll, we have drainage projects that come up all the, all the time. Um, traffic signal timing, we have Friendship Church Road Sidewalk Project in District 1, Powder Springs Road Trail, District 1, Freeman Road Sidewalk in District 2, Davis Road Sidewalk in District 3, Horseshoe Bend Sidewalk in District 4, along with Factory Shoals Road Sidewalks in District 4. 
We'll have our Chattahoochee River Trail Pedestrian Improvements in District 4, and then we'll have our three LMAG projects for next year also. Okay, so these are just some of the highlights of some of the projects that we're in construction on. Um, the first one is our Powers Ferry Road over Rottenwood Creek Tributary, which was, it was a bridge replacement. We replaced that with three triple eight, eight inch, eight by eight reinforced concrete box culverts. Um, and that project was completed in August of this year. Okay. And our next page is um, Woodland Brook Drive over Gilmore Creek. This was another, another bridge replacement project with um, double 10 by 11 box culverts. Um, this was contracted by CMES and we also completed it in August of this year. Okay, so this is our um, project down in District 4 is um, Factory Shoals Road with Harmony Leland Clay Elementary Schools and this was a schools on safety and operational improvement project. Um, we did um, as we worked with the Cobb County School District as they relocated Harmony, Leland, and Clay Elementary Schools. Um, and we completed this in July of this year. This project is our, a joint project with the City of Marietta and it's our old 41 Highway Bridge over the CSX Railroad. Um, contractor C.W. Matthews and we are scheduled to complete the project summer of 2021. Okay. Our next one is a project in District 1, which is Lost Mountain Road at Midway Road, Mirror Lake Drive. Um, this was a safety and operational intersection improvement where we're realigning Lost Mountain Road and Midway Road. Um, and then also this one is a um, CW Matthews project and we're scheduled to be complete by December 2020. Um, our next project is McCollum Road at Ben King Road. And this is another safety and operational intersection improvement where we're, uh, a roundabout is being constructed. Um, and we're adding some turn lanes, realigning Lockhart Drive. There's some pedestrian improvements. Um, this is CW Matthews also, and our, our goal is to have this completed by November of 2021. Okay. This is a, one of our, probably the biggest project in our 2016 program. And this is our Windy Hill Road, Terrell Mill Road Connector Project. And um, we had hoped to have a groundbreaking ceremony on this project. And unfortunately, with um, COVID and just how everything happened, we were unable to do that. So we'll definitely be hold, holding a, a, a ribbon cutting when the road opens, but um, hopefully we would love to, um, the CFC, if they're interested, come out when it's safe, just to do a tour maybe of the road and see how it's going eventually. Um, but we'll, we'll talk with you, Alice, to see what your thought is on that at, at a later okay. date. Um, but this is, of course, um, Windy Hill Terrell Mill. ER Snell is our contractor, and it's $17.3 million. And our scheduled completion is a couple years out, so fall of 2022. Our next project is our I-20 eastbound ramps at Riverside Parkway. Um, this is a congestion relief and mobility improvement project. We realigned South Service Drive with River side epicenter drive um, installed a traffic signal that just went live in the last couple of weeks um, so this project is scheduled to be completed spring of 2021 also okay. so this is Cherokee Street um, this is a safety and operational improvement project between Giles and Shiloh we're adding a third travel lane on um, eastbound we're adding um, turn lanes and access improvements and pedestrian improvements and this is as mentioned earlier a joint project with the city of Kennesaw. Lawson is our contractor and it's scheduled to be completed summer of um, 2021 also. We have Ebenezer Road sidewalk project and this is we're adding curb and gutter and sidewalks along the east side of Ebenezer Road between Hampton Oaks Bend and Maybreeze Road. Um, our contractor is Glosson Enterprises and this one should be completed in summer of 2021 also. So this next one is our uh, Mableton Parkway Pedestrian Improvement Project. This is a, um, a project, a pedestrian improvement project along Mableton Parkway between Factory Shoals and Discovery Boulevard. It's 2.52 miles. We're constructing a 10 foot wide trail on the west side and a five foot wide sidewalk on the east side. And we're um, having some traffic signal improvements along the corridor also. Um, construction scheduled to begin this fall and it's probably a 24 month um, duration to, to complete the improvements along that corridor. Okay, so these are our construction um, resurfacing highlights. So for our contract 2021, our 2020-1 um, thoroughfares for LMIG, GDOT LMIG funding was for uh, $6.1 million. Our total contract amount was 11 million, just a little over 11 million, and we were able to resurface 17 roads or 26 miles of roads um, and resurface them again in 2020, April of 2020. Um, 
Our next contract was um, the local road south, and that amount was almost $5 million, and it was awarded to Blount Construction. That's 80 roads at just at 19.22 miles. Um, we began uh, resurfacing in May of this year. And then we have our local roads north, which was $5.7 million with Bartow Paving Company, which is an, um, another 85 miles, um, 85 roads at just, just over 19 miles of roads. And we began resurfacing in June of this year. So these are our next planned next steps. So we'll have 13 projects that we plan to have completed um, by this next quarter. We'll have 12 construction starts, which will be a bridge project, eight drainage projects, an intersection project, and two sidewalks. Then we hope to begin design or engineering starts on three drainage projects, three sidewalk projects, and three resurfacing projects. And I'll take any questions. Um, I was curious about the construction cost and materials. Have the expenses gone up, stayed about the same, or come down some? Actually, and I can I can verify this, it seems like our asphalt um, prices have come down a smidge. Um, so we did get a little bit better price on asphalt this, this last time um, on our, some of our resurfacing jobs, but um, I think some of the other materials have, have stayed the same or kind of gone up some. It's kind of a mixed bag. Okay. Erica? Yes, ma'am? Would you, would you explain what LMIG stands for? Oh, I'm sorry. It's our lo local maintenance. Um, oh, what's the I stand for? LMI. Um, grant through Georgia DOT. It used to be the old MARC program, but that they, they utilize that program and look at how, the population of a county and then how many road miles that we actually have. And they use that to determine how much funding each county will receive or city would receive to go towards um, resurfacing or whatever falls in that category. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Uh -huh. Any other questions for Erica? All right, not hearing any. We appreciate everything you do, Erica, and it was a great report. All right, other business. Um, is there anybody that joined the meeting late that I need to know? No? Okay. Uh, our November meeting will be virtual. So if there's no further business, y'all have a great afternoon and we'll see you in the uh, uh, Excuse me, it's Barkley. Um, I just wanted to bring up a point that I hope to bring up last time. And I know we mentioned we have splice signs at the different projects, but I think because of the sensitivity we're having right now and getting this thing passed this time, I just noticed in my travels and from experience I've had, we are not doing a good job selling what we're doing. If it says splice dollars at work, it's one thing, but if you go to the city of Atlanta, I think in some cases Fulton County and other places, they will tell you how much it was and what your money is going for. I really think that from the standpoint of marketing and letting you know, our citizens know this is how the money is being spent, though we've got tons of information, you know, open information, but I just think a very clean, distinct signs that tells our story better i think would help us because we're doing a lot of exceptional work beautiful projects but very honestly the sign is about this big is just i don't think in this day and age with people's sensitivities concerns about money and also concerns about if government's really handling things correctly is really doing what we needed to do in this particular time frame so, just my comment. So, a typical sign in, in Atlanta, say, would lay out, this is how much this project costs, and this is how much SPLOS paid towards this project, that yes. type of thing? Yes. And also, particularly when things are coming out of the ground, I mean, you can't really do it first, but when stuff's coming out of the ground, say a fire station, there's a rendering on that sign. And I'm not sure if Atlanta does that, but I've seen that with some of my construction projects. You've got a picture of what it is because people will look at the picture and then just say dollars at work. You know, this has been provided by, you know, 
this is my, this is the amount of money. I, I just think it would be helpful going forward. It's hard to do when it's maintenance. It's hard to do when some things are not quote unquote very sexy. But I think we really could help ourselves moving forward. And I know they're not inexpensive to do. Sorry about my dog. Um, but I think if we had a template, and we might could do it so to where you could use a base and then add to it and pull it off. Um, but you know, the folks in Overt Parks are trying to figure out their signage. Maybe they can. Maybe they've got some ideas too. But that's just. And I'd be glad to look. Next time I see some, I'll stop and take pictures. If you would, I think that would be really helpful to pass those along, because I agree with you. We don't do enough to promote lost to the public so that they know how this project got built or how this building got here. And if we could improve that going forward, um, maybe we would be helpful going down the road to have SPLOS thing here for a while. I, in my professional career in public relations, when I have the opportunity and there is public money paying for part of the project, I will, it doesn't always get in the paper, but I do include exactly how the funding is coming about when it's public dollars. So that's another piece of the puzzle that can sometimes help is, is just being sure that it's addressed how the funding is put together. Combination. Yeah, well, if you do that, I would I'll appreciate that. I'll be glad to. All right, anything further before we adjourn? Yeah, Madam Chair, this is Jay. Um, you know, you're tripping my my feelings on that stuff there's lots of ideas i have as far as continuing the sploss and getting getting people to be aware of, of all that's around them that sploss is paying for and sploss is doing i think if we work through the through the cities or through the county as far as the website and every time you go to the website it says do you know how much of this stuff that you get to enjoy or drive on or appreciate Splost is paying for it. And we hit him with that at, the, at hello, essentially, in a lot of these, in a lot of these areas. It's an idea that I've had for a while. We could, I, I agree the signs are important and, and, and the cities, I want to say cities, but the cities and counties, if they're, they're getting the money, they need to be interested that they're not going to get the money unless they do it. Well, and I think it's important to have a template so that everything is consistent. And also, we could ask them to do sliders on the, first, on the main page, their home page of their websites. So every picture that comes across currently is all information about things that have been paid for by SWAPs. And whoever owns their websites may hate me by now. But yeah, like, like I was saying, we hit them at hello. Mm -hmm. and let them yeah. know everywhere they're going in the county, we're telling them that this is thanks to kind of mm -hmm. the spot is making their life beautiful in a way, and I don't think they know it. I agree. They have no, no idea. Yeah. The problem is, is it really, we're now talking about what to do with the next floss, if this one's, if the next one once approved, because absentee ballots are going out tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. And early voting starts in just a couple of weeks. And so, you know, the one thing we can do is, you know, all of us can share information on our personal social media and ask our Cobb County friends to share. But we're really, you know, behind the eight ball right now because of those town hall meetings have been canceled and, and everything. And, you know, the election's on top of us now. Yeah. Do we have like a short fact in spread been sent to me? So I'll admit to not knowing where it is, but do we have like a short fact sheet or something say we can post on next door or I can put out to my civic club here in my community that we all have kind of the same talking points? Um, um, I can have and get back to you. Yeah, I think that'd be helpful for all of us to have that and share it, be able to share it in our different um, ways we communicate. Okay. Well, these are all some really good ideas and, and um, if you have more, please let me know. And if there's nothing further, you'll have a great afternoon. Thank you. Thank you.